In this video, I will show you how you too can make the option wealth strategy your monthly cash flow machine. I'll do that by showing you exactly how much cash we pocketed last month in July from selling options. I will also share with you two trades we did to help you see two very powerful techniques that you can use to drastically improve the odds of winning your option trades. I'll then show you a trick that you can use like we did last month to help you reposition your portfolio when positions move against you. This will allow you to turn potentially losing positions into winners. Here you see every option trade we did last month in July. The red boxes are the trades that we're going to talk about in this video. If you've been watching this monthly cash flow video series over the past several years, you're going to notice that there's a lot more red boxes this month than usual. I won't go into detail about every single one of those trades, but those red boxes are vitally important if you want to be a long-term successful option trader. And I encourage you to stay tuned in until the very end of this video because that's where I'll show you exactly how much net cash flow we put into our pocket as well as the return that we received. During the trading day, my sole focus is not on generating as much cash flow as possible. That's my number two goal. However, my main focus, especially when the markets are down like they are now, is to make sure that long term we're putting ourselves in the best position to win. Let me show you what I mean. Here you see the trades we've done in Honeywell, ticker symbol HON, over the past couple years. However, the trades I want to focus on are the ones in the red box. I'm not showing you these because this was some awesome winner that we had. We did have some really awesome winners last month, and I'll share one of them with you in just a few minutes. And I'll tell you why it ended up being so good for us. But I'm sharing this position with you to show you one very important technique that we have as option traders that stock traders just don't have access to. When a position moves against you, it's very important to use this technique. In fact, to turn this position into a winner, we had to use this technique three times. Here on the left, you see the daily chart, and on the right, the weekly chart of Honeywell. Where the purple arrows are, that's the day that we sold this cash secured put option. Notice in the left daily chart, between the two yellow arrows, the Honeywell had been in a nice uptrend over the past month. At the top of that channel, you see that it had recently made a higher high. At the bottom, notice that it had recently made a higher low as well. It then broke out above the green 50 exponential moving average. Down in the volume section in the left chart in the yellow box, notice that over the past couple of months, the buyers were definitely in control. Looking over at the right weekly chart, we see that down in the volume section in the yellow box that again, over the past several months, the buyers had definitely been in control. Notice on the weekly chart at the purple arrow, the Honeywell had been finding nice support at the red 200 moving average. Because of that, as you can see here in the live trade alert that I sent out to my patrons, we sold to open the third Friday of May $190 cash secured put option. We were paid $3.40 per share for selling that put option. I figured if Honeywell declined, it most likely find support at the green 50 moving average on the daily chart. Worst case scenario, it might come down to where the purple arrow is in the weekly chart around 180 per share at that 200 exponential moving average. Well, fast forward a month and we were still in pretty decent shape because as you can see here, at the left of the arrow is the day we entered the trade on April 20th. And at the right point of the arrow is when I rolled this trade. So Honeywell was trading right around 190 per share or right at our strike price. Now I mentioned earlier that during the trading day, my number one primary focus is on making smart trades. And my number two goal is to maximize that return. If you go back to the video I made several months ago in which I discussed some important tips for option traders, one of the things I've mentioned is that your number one goal should be to protect your capital. As a result, with every trade we do, my number one goal is to protect our capital and the number two goal is to get as high of a return as possible. But I didn't like that during the previous month that we were in this trade between April 20th and May 20th, that our cash secured put option had gone in the money. At the end of April, you see that Honeywell went as low as 185 per share. Now please keep in mind that Honeywell was actually trading right at our 190 strike price on the day that we rolled this position. If my main focus had been on pocketing as much cash as possible or on being greedy, a bad trait for option stock traders, I would have just rolled that 190 strike price out. However, my number one rule is to protect our capital. And I realized that our capital might be in a little bit of danger here because Honeywell had dropped to 185 over the past month. Because of that, I knew that in order to fulfill my number one rule, I needed to roll this cash jigger put option strike price down. So as you can see here, on May 20th, we rolled the Honeywell May 20th 190 cash jigger put option out 
and down to the June 17th, 185 strike price put option. What made it even sweeter is that in addition to being able to roll our strike price down to the area where Honeywell had been finding support during the previous month, we're also able to pocket $3.10 per share. At this point, I was happy with this position. However, it wasn't going to stay that way. I've now fast forward the chart to June 16th, the day that we rolled this option out again. At the left side of the yellow arrow, that's when we rolled the option down to 185 back in May. At the point of the arrow on the right side, that's June 16th. Notice that everything had gone according to plan until about a week before this trade. All of a sudden, Honeywell gapped down and on the day that we rolled this option, it was at 180 per share. Again, going back to our number one rule, we have to protect our capital. And then we have to try and number two, get as high of a return as possible. Here you see the trade we did on June 16th. Again, we rolled the strike price down as we rolled it out. We bought the June 17th, 185 cash secure put option back and rolled it down to the July 15th, 180 cash secure put option. And again, we were able to pocket a credit. It wasn't as big as the last one. It was only $1.05 per share, but I was happy to get that credit while rolling the strike price down to Honeywell's new recent low at 180. But Honeywell still wasn't done with this yet. I've now fast forward the chart to July 12th. At the left of the arrow is where we rolled the strike price down and out from the June 185 cash secure put option to the third Friday of July 180 cash secure put option. Notice again that Honeywell dropped and was trading right at $173.57. That meant that our 180 cash secure put option was in the money by over $6 per share. Now Honeywell appeared to be trying to find support around the 170 area. So I could have rolled that 180 strike price out in hopes it would rebound and maybe come up and retest the green 50 moving average for resistance. But we go back to our number one rule, which is to always protect our capital. Of course, you know I'm going to say that we did here. Here you see the trade I sent out to my patrons as soon as the trade went through. On July 12th, we rolled the July 15th 180 cash secure put option out to August 19th and down to 170. That meant that we lowered the cash secure put option strike price down by $10. Even though we lowered it by $10 per share, we're still able to walk away with 30 cents per share in our pocket. Is that 30 cents per share great money? Absolutely not. But honestly, I didn't care about that. What I cared most about was getting our strike price down because Honeywell was still showing weakness. Well, how has this position turned out? As you can see here, two days ago on August 1st, we were able to buy this August 19th 170 cash secure put option back for 35 cents per share. Immediately, as you can see here at the purple arrow, we put that capital right back to work by selling the September 16th UPS 190 cash secure put option. For that, we're paid $5.05 .05 per share. Hopefully this trade will go better for us than the Honeywell position did. But in spite of Honeywell going against us in a pretty big way, in the end, we're still able to walk over with a profit of $746.17, as you can see here. If you have a position that's going against you, there's a way you can roll that position so that's in a more favorable spot for you, I encourage you to do that. We all want to pocket as much cash as possible. But if it's not already, I encourage you to make your number one rule to protect your capital. And then after that, your number two rule will be to get as high a return as possible. Those are the kind of goals and rules that help you to stay in this business for a very long time and hopefully forever. By the way, if you want to become a more profitable stock and option trader, please do yourself a favor and hit the subscribe button and bell notification. And if you're finding value in this video, please hit the like button. The final trade tip I want to share with you before I show you how much cash we pocketed last month from selling options shows how important it is to be disciplined and patient as an option trader. Over the past several months, I've been asked a lot if it's smart to sell put options when the overall market is going down. My answer, like always, is if we can put the odds of winning in our favor, I'm happy to sell put options. Unlike with our Honeywell position, let me now show you a trade that went our way in a big way. Let me show you why it went our way so that you too can use this technique and bear or bull markets to put tons of cash into your pocket every single month. First though, let me show you what's going on in the overall market on the day that we did this trade. As you can see in the left daily chart, the S&P 500 was in a downtrend. It had recently made a lower low and appeared to also have just made a lower high. However, over in the weekly chart, the one thing I liked was that at the yellow arrow, it was approaching the red 200 exponential moving average. So I knew that if I was going to sell a new cash secure put option in a stock, I wanted to make sure that I was really careful with it. I wanted to give it some room for the underlying stock to continue going down and we still get a win. But first, we never really want to trade in a stock that had the same downward look that the S&P 500 did. So in our daily check of all the stocks that we track, 
we found these charts of Accenture, ticker symbol ACN. Let me talk you through why I felt comfortable selling this cash secure put option in ACN, even though the overall market was looking bearish. I know there's a lot going on this chart and I'll explain it all to you. Let's start on the left daily chart. Notice at the white line that back in May, ACN had found support around 267 per share. A couple weeks before we did this trade, it retested that same area around 267 for support again and it held. Notice in the white box in the volume section, over the past several weeks, the selling pressure had dissipated and the buying pressure had increased to the point where it was really looking strong. Now let's look over at the weekly chart. Notice that it appeared to be finding nice support above the red 200 moving average or again around 270 per share. It hadn't even come down to test the red 200 exponential moving average at the white arrow. Notice in the yellow box that even though there had been a lot of selling pressure as represented by the red volume bars several months earlier, over the past month and a half, there had been nice buying pressure. Because of that, I felt comfortable selling an out of the money cash secure put option in ACN. Notice I said out of the money. Looking back at the daily chart, I decided to sell the 260 cash secure put option, which coincided with where the purple line is. In order for our cash secure put option to be challenged, ACM would have to break through an area that had held a support for it and then decline by another $7. Switching over to the weekly chart, that red tuna moving average was right around 256 per share. So I knew that if this position went against us, it'd mostly find support in that area. Yes, our put option would be in the money, but we most likely would be able to adjust it just like we had done with Honeywell. With all that in mind, I felt comfortable selling the third Friday of August 260 cash secure put option. On June 30th, we sold to open the ACN August 19th $260 cash secure put option. For that, we received $7 per share or $700 minus the 27 cent commission. Not a bad payday, huh? Well, what happened? Now I have moved the charts forward to the day that we exited this position, which was last week. In the left daily chart, at the left side, at the base of that arrow, that's when we sold this put option. At the point of the arrow is when we bought it back to close it out. Notice that ACN actually came down and retested that 270 support. It pierced that support and almost reached our 260 strike price put option. But on that same day, buyers came in and shoved the price right back up to that support area where the purple line is located. But after that, it absolutely took off for a couple days. It struggled to push through the green 50 moving average, but then it broke through it and reached the 200 exponential moving average on the daily chart. If you look over at the weekly chart, notice that at that point, it was also right at the green 50 moving average. Because of that, and because the put option was now only worth 50 cents per share, and the fact that we still had three weeks left until this option expired, I decided to go ahead and buy this option back three weeks early and close it out. So as you can see in the blue box and blue arrow, we bought this cash secure put option back on July 29th for 50 cents per share. In all, we pocketed $6.50 per share minus commission and closed this position out three weeks early. Because of that, we put that capital right back to work, as you can see in the purple boxes, and some companies that you're probably very familiar with, Google and Johnson & Johnson. And notice the expiration date of Johnson & Johnson. We did the same expiration date as the ACN position, August 19th. So we were able to double up our option premium for that portion of our capital. In all, we were in this ACN position for 29 days. If you analyze that return for $6.50 per share that we walked away with, it equates to a 31.4% non-leveraged annualized return on capital. If you're curious about what the return was based on the 2,717 margin requirement, here you see that if you analyze that return, it equates to a 300% annualized return on margin. Now let me show you exactly how much cash we pocketed last month and the return that we were able to achieve by selling options and collecting some dividends. So you can see an example of what is potentially possible for an option share to get paid. At the bottom of the sheet in the blue box, you see as a result of selling options, we put a net of $12,750.30 into our pocket. Now I want to show you some math here because we had a Disney cash secure put option that was assigned to us. And once it was assigned, we actually sold the shares and I switched it over to a poor man's covered call by buying a Leaps call option. In my monthly option cash flow, I don't count the cash that we use to buy the Leaps call option because in my opinion, it's similar to buying a stock or doing a covered call. So we pocketed $12,750.30 net option premium in July. In the orange box, you see that trading commission cost us just over $105. And in the green box, you see that we received $943.35 in dividends from the seven covered call positions that we are in. In the purple box, you see that data fees were $32.75. At the bottom of the black box, you see that we are paid just over $159 in interest for the cash we have sitting in our account. So in all, we put a net of $13,714.58 cash into our pocket in this main option trading account. 
if you annualize that return, based on the approximate $975,000 that we had at risk, it equates to right at a 16.6% annualized non-leveraged return on capital. And remember, we rolled down many option positions to improve our overall portfolio position. If you're curious about what the return was based on the required margin of $118,296, it equates to a 137% annualized return on margin. If you'd like to get an alert as soon as we do trades, similar to the ones I showed in this video, check out the benefits of becoming a patron down at the link in the description below. The best option trading strategy I found in my over 20 years of trading stocks and options is our upgraded version of the wheel strategy. If you'd like to see how we've taken the wheel strategy and modified it to consistently put cash into our pocket every single month, check out the video series at the link above in the description below entitled The Option Wheel Strategy. In that video series, I go into great detail and show real life examples of how we modified the Option Wheel Strategy to achieve awesome returns and put cash into our pocket every single month. Until next time, happy investing and we'll see you again soon.